Does that resonate with you? Don't ask that question. Lengthy. It just sounds really shit and boring. Make your product and your service the best out there. The problem that coaches have with their calls to action is... This is a must watch for 99% of coaches. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, formerly Biceps and Banter, as you can see from the YouTube channel name. And we're here today to help you with your online fitness business in any way that we can. And today we're going to talk about how you're just not selling yourself. Maybe it's from a lack of belief in your results. Maybe it's a lack of belief around your coaching. Maybe it's through fear. Maybe you don't like sales, whatever it might be. But one of the biggest problems I see with coaches, they just do not sell themselves often enough, well enough, partly because I think they're scared and they use kind of like the call to action. They just kind of throw it in the bottom of a post and hope for the best when they are oh, got coaching spaces available. And it just sounds really shit and boring. And, and that's probably why people aren't really signing up is you're not giving them a reason to. So... We're going to touch on that briefly today. I think people see it as like, I don't know, maybe it's sleazy. The, the, I think they worry they look desperate, don't they? As well. Yeah, they're, oh. they're, they're worried that they look desperate. They're worried that they don't look exclusive. They're worried about perception about, oh, they need clients. I think the same when I see Mercedes advertise their cars on TV. Yeah. I think, oh, they're probably desperate. Oh, they're, uh, they're desperate to sell their stuff. Desperate yeah. to sell that car. So, the business, isn't it? <laughs> it comes back to that where I'm for uh, by this. I don't want to look like I need clients. But do you need clients? Yeah. Probably. What? So talk about it. Then. So talk about it then. Yeah. I don't want to look like I need clients. What you really mean is I don't want other coaches to see that I need clients. That's what you really want because yeah. you want to keep up appearances and you want to look nice and full. Because surely you would want potential leads to to know that you want clients, right? Surely you would need that to be the case. Like when we yeah. go join the members group. We go join the members group because if you're not spending 99 quid on the business, what are you actually doing? Yeah. Like you are a wasting your time and but Quite, you clearly don't care about your business. Don't care about your business. Well, if you sign up one client at 150 quid a month, you've made your you've made your money back. Profit on that. So profit on that. So fifty one pounds. Is that is exact. that sleazy? There you go. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what is it? It's like forty percent sometimes. <laughs> yeah. No. Is that sleazy? Or is that because we know that the the, the 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 value in there is greater than the than the price, right? So I can talk about that again and go. You should be in that members group because it is the best ninety nine pounds that you spend on your business. Because it is. It, is that sleazy? Is that desperate? Or is it just going get in the members group? That's going to help you. Yeah. Just the same as with your clients or potential clients or leads or followers or whatever you want to call them. If you are selling something that is going to help their life, health, physique, confidence, whatever it is, and you're not selling it, you are leaving the opportunity open for them to go elsewhere for that advice, right? And as we know that the standard of coaching is 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 incredibly poor, they might get ripped off. They might end up getting no results. They might end up in worst case scenarios, uh, which I've seen with eating disorders. You're doing that, right? You're you're allowing that to happen. Mm -hmm. They've then got a tarnished view of the industry. I'm not going to work with online coaches. They're, they're rubbish. I work with one. All they did was send me a meal plan and didn't hear from him for three weeks. That's what you're allowing if they're going elsewhere. If you know that your product and your service is good enough and the best out there, fucking say it. And if you don't think it is, then that's the problem. Yeah. Make your product and your service the best out there and then fucking say it. Because you saying it and saying how good you are and saying the results that you get and saying that I don't fob my clients off with fuck all responses and saying that you don't just get a meal plan and saying that you don't get somebody else's training program and saying all of the things that you do and showing it, you saying and doing that breeds confidence in you yeah. like but not saying that because you're shy or you're scared or you don't want to look desperate keep getting no clients then because you will be tarnished or painted with the same brush as some other coaches because you're you're afraid of you're afraid of talking your own service up i, I say to to my coaches all the time if i'm shouting about my coaching when i've got a waiting list and i'm shouting about it more than you are that's a problem we're full like you can't work with us for three months. Why am I talking about my coaching more than you're talking about yours? They can sign up tomorrow with you. Like you can get clients through the door now. And, and I always say that's that's a worrying trend that I see. Is I'm like if if I'm beating you with my social proof and the amount of times I'm talking about my coaching, there's a problem. There's a real big problem. And and like Mike said, I think some of it comes down to they don't really believe in their service. I think some of it comes down to not wanting to look like they need clients or want clients. But do you know who's not worried about that? Coaches that have got more clients than you. <laughs> Like, they're not worried about it. The only people looking at your stuff going, oh, they look desperate, are people with no clients. The coaches that don't have any clients themselves. Because the coaches that do have lots of clients who do these CTAs look at that and go, I bet they're doing well. 
that's the the mindset shift that you need to have with it. And one of the other parts of this that I want to talk about, that I, I I talk I have to bring up all the time with people, is that coaches have the CTA, they, their CTA at the bottom of their posts all the time, and it's usually DM me, uh, coach space is available, DM me, or fancy a chat about coaching, message me, whatever. And I've used this tagline before, and I think it's one that I think Michael will start to use now going forward, and he'll steal the tagline because I think it's quite a good one. No, he won't. Let's he see. probably won't. <laughs> is that the problem that coaches have with their calls to action is that they're suggestive, not affirmative. Right? Is that they're suggesting, if you fancy this, do this. If you fancy it. And it should be affirmative. It should be, I know you want this. I know that you're struggling with this, this, and this. Here is the only option is to call you. The only option is to message you. It's that you should create your social proof in a way that the only possible outcome that's going to get the result they want is to message you. Not presenting this future, presenting this opportunity, presenting this this person and going, fancy a bit of that? Well, if you want, just just reach out. Yeah, fancy that it's always just like standoffish like suggestive and it's like it's never going to lead to someone reaching out because like mike said you're not an authority there if you're an authority it's like the illogical the only logical step is to reach out to you it's just a matter of when if they're following you you know they fancy a bit of that you know that that's the result you want that they want you you should know you should know again if you, you know your niche well enough it's not like does i hate this one as well does that resonate with you don't ask that question of course it should, because you know your niche. You know the problems that this client has had. Problem that coaches have is that they're too suggestive and they're not being firm enough with their CTAs. Make sure whenever you write your CTA out that it's affirmative, that it affirms something to be true. It, it, it's like the next step, not suggestive as if it's like an option. It's not an option. It's the only option. It's the only thing they can do after that point. Still are, if you want me. It's a good one, that. I like it. It's not a tagline, though, is it? Like, lengthy. <laughs> no, you know, don't be scared of no, the, the, coaching the your tagline step up to, to be, be better, than, better you. than you because there's always somebody... CTAs that, should be affirmative, not suggestive. There's a tagline. There's a tagline. But the point is very good. The point is uh, is 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 bang on, actually. I'm going to I'm gonna use a, an analogy or an anecdote from a, a client call last week. So I had a, I had a client call last week with... Um, with one of my clients Ross and he was talking about how much um, his coaching has improved since working with Jake one of our coaches and he was saying yeah I'm I'm retaining clients better I'm future pacing like I feel much more confident in my service he was like I've actually got one of my uh, first ever muscle gain clients that have come usually it's just fat loss he was like got my first ever muscle gain client he's like coming from another coach so he was with him 12 months and he gained two kilos in 12 months. So when I did his training, uh, when I did his nutrition assessment, he's only eating 2,300 calories. So he's, he's only been in a couple of months. So I was like, with my get his calories up already. I was like, he's gaining weight. He's PB'd on this. He's PB'd on that. And I went, have you mentioned that on Instagram? No. No. What do you mean you haven't mentioned it? You've just told me that there's a competitor that's had somebody for 12 months gain two kilos, had them eating 2,300 calories. They've come into you. You've changed things around. They're hitting PBs and you haven't told Instagram. Should I? Yes. Yeah. Like, that's what exactly what you should be doing. Coaches hate shouting about how good they are, but they don't see that they're not. They're just positioning themselves as less an authority by doing that. Is that you need to put yourself out there. I need to do it often. Like you think Instagram's just a small snapshot in time of someone's day. It's such a tiny part of their day, seeing your stories, seeing your feed posts. They've got all the other stresses and strains of everyday life, kids, partners, jobs, you know, seeing family, seeing friends, having a social life, trying to balance all this stuff. They're not reading every single one of your social proof. They're not reading every single story where you post it. So you have to shout about it all the time. They're not going to see that one. The thing I hate about coaches when they just post one piece of social proof a week and expect everyone to know on their audience about that person's life and exactly what they've done, exactly what they've been doing, that they they know exactly what they're going to be doing. And I'm like, no, they don't know exactly everything about your coaching, about that person's life, the struggles. They don't resonate with it every single time. They don't know exactly the CTA. You need to do it three or four times a week for months on end for them to go, oh, I know what I need to do if I want to reach out for coaching and just send them that word or I do that. It's this, this. It's not arrogance, I don't think. I think it's just an, un, an un, a misunderstanding of how social media works and people's lives. I think it's not understanding behaviour. It's not understanding the psychology of people. But it's like they need to see this stuff over and over and over and over and over again to register. Oh, I, just, I posted that social proof last week, though. Yeah. I posted one last week. Okay, well, what about this week? Because I always say to coaches, can you remember anything you saw on social media yesterday? No. What, not a single post? Who it was by? What it said in it? The picture? No, not a single thing. Right. What does that tell you? 
that people don't remember shit they saw yesterday on social media. Correct. So you need to talk about it all the time. If you want to be an authority, you have to say the same things, talk about the same things over and over and over again, like we do. When we talk about competitors, we talk about other people doing mentoring. We say it that many times that eventually it sinks in. And event well, some of it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> eventually it sinks in and it goes through, right? That we have to repeat ourselves. You will have to repeat yourself over and over again that you're an authority, that you get good results, that your CTAs are that firm, that they do make a point that often, that frequently. Not, oh, I posted one last month. Kind of, oh, that's all right, isn't it? No, no, it's not all right. No, all the time. You should be talking about it. All the time. If you want to learn how to do CTAs like that, we've got three videos in the members group. So, Ooh. you know. How much is it? 99. Ooh. So, again, this is the third time we've mentioned the members group in this video. And pain point, if you want to learn how to do CTAs, solution, because it, it's the right thing. Does it look desperate? Maybe. <laughs> no, it doesn't look desperate. It, does, it doesn't, though. It really it doesn't. doesn't. Because it's the right thing. Get in the members group. It's like we've, we've had people do launches for their group coaching, right? And the same thing happens every single time, is that we sit there on the call and go, right, guys, you need to be talking about this four weeks away from the group. And then two weeks away, when you're selling spaces, you need to make sure you're talking about it every single day, maybe even twice a day sometimes on your stories, on your Instagram, on emails. What, for two weeks straight? Yeah, for two weeks straight, pretty much going through pain points, problems that you solve, future pacing, frequently asked questions, objection handling, current clients, social proof. What, for two weeks? Yeah, yeah, for two weeks. Yeah, twice a day for two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go, oh, it seems a bit much, doesn't it? Right, well, let's just do it and let's just see. We had clients recently, we've been for a few launches with now, and this one just done, they said to us, this is the hardest we pushed, pre-launch, three weeks pre-launch, they're pushing it, talking about their program, talking about their group program. We got a message only the other day saying, biggest launch we've ever done. Yeah, it will be. Why do you think that is? Yeah, we're sick of talking about it. Yeah, I thought you might be. Consistently across the board, we see the coaches that talk the most about their coaching get more people reach out about their coaching. Funny that, isn't it? That's, that's what happens. If you do a launch and you leave it to a week before and you just start randomly talking about it, you're going to get no one. If you build up the launch for weeks, I don't want to say months, but weeks before, you will get more people in and you have to talk about it all the time. And you'll still get people go, oh, I didn't really see that. I didn't know it was on. I didn't know that's when it finished. You'll still get it. And again, like we said this in another video, it comes from experience. We know because we've done it. We've done a launch where we give it one week and it flopped. We've done it with clients where we've told them to do it for three weeks. They didn't listen to us. They did it for a week. It's flopped. And we've seen clients that push a launch for three weeks straight, get best numbers they've ever got on it. We've seen it. We know that you need to talk more about your coaching than you currently are. That's probably one of the reasons you don't have any clients is you're just posting content that's nice, that's value, that's going to reach more people and more non-followers and it's a hooky and it's six seconds and it's going to trick the algorithm to get more views, blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's not going to get more clients, though, is it? Unless you're talking about your coaching alongside it all, the whole time. Just don't talk about enough coaches. So you just don't talk enough about their product. I got my I got my phone out here to Clearly. look at a, a message, yeah, because I, I needed to find it, and I've just lost it. And um, there we go. It was from uh, one of my clients who's just launched his first group and got uh, seventy one on it, um, and he put a lot of lessons to. So it's a, it's, a, it's a follow-up message. A lot of lessons too. Like if you want it that bad, you actually have to go ham with it and be relentless. Someone signed up and he's a marketeer. He was like, firstly, well done with the marketing, mate. You've look, made it look really exciting and something that people will feel silly to miss out on. And that's exactly what it should be. He's learned that you have to go ham and be relentless with it, right? And he's got 71. And I have so many people that get 10 on it and go... And they got 10 on it. And go, well, look at your page and you've you've posted four times. Well, no, I haven't. I posted it in there and, and, and on that as well. Yeah, but I can't see it, can I? Because I'm having to read the caption and it's really loose at the end. Like, so it doesn't really count, does it? That yeah. what you've got to do is like Dan said, two, three weeks, post, 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 post. Give it your best shot and and see what happens then. Is it gonna get you less clients? Is it gonna get you less sign ups? It's not gonna get you less, is it? What if more people see it? If you sell it, if you sell it better, if you sell it more, if you talk about the benefits more, if you talk about what it's going to do, if you show more social proof, it's not going to sell less, is it? It's going to sell more. So do that one then. But you hold yourself back because you feel some kind of way about it. Understand that for every ten posts that you make, somebody might only see two or three of them, yeah, and they might not even pay attention to it. They might just scroll past it. They might be busy. They might not have got the sound on that day. They might just be doing it whilst they're watching TV yeah. and not really paying attention. Yeah. Like, yeah. They might only be served three of those ten, and they're not even guaranteed to read, see, listen, 
So post more. So if we know that they, they might only see three out of ten, make fucking twenty, make thirty. Like your client Ryan, with, with his launch, did did a really good launch, and the numbers were in eighteen days. He posted 42 times, 34 of them had reference to his group coaching in it, and 19 of them he was wearing a Deadpool mask, like to... Uh, part uh, of the launch. Yeah, as part of the launch, right, because he's a, the superior accelerator. Free plug there for you. Pay us later, so. The point is, it was 42 posts in 18 days. Whew, sounds a lot, isn't it? It's too, is it, is yeah, that too as well much? As, as well as an email every day on that day, as well as two, two emails some days as well. So you look at that, four pieces of content potentially some people are saying. Is that too much though? Well, no. Well, selling out a launch... Like, that's Who's the outcome. Out? So yeah. You go, well, yeah. Do you want that or not? Like, it's the biggest ever launch he's done. There you go. We see it time and time again. Like, coaches do not talk enough about their coaching. They do not CTA it well enough. If you want to learn how to CTA properly, get in the fucking members group now. It is the only place where you're going to get that level of training, that level of webinar, the level of help for £99 a month. I still can't work out why people aren't in that if you're watching this. It baff baffles me, right? Get in there. There's actionable advice. Even if you just get in there for a month, watch those three videos and then cancel. Do that. Just do something. Because the amount of coaches that sit there on their fucking hands doing fuck all, scrolling their phones and Instagrams, watching Netflix and then moaning about their clients who do the same thing and, and don't go out for a walk and do their steps and want fat loss, it blows my mind. So don't be one of those people. Get in the group. Don't Speaking keep talking it. about it though. Don't keep talking about it, though. Don't keep going on about it. Yeah. That's it. You look desperate like there's no one in there. Well, there's 300 plus coaches in there getting ahead of you, so maybe join them. See you in a bit. Bye.